Acts chapter 2. This is on my heart most of the night last night. And so, I don't know how well I'll do, but we want to obey God. Amen. Acts chapter 2 and verse number 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. <clears throat> and uh, we'll skip down to verse 12. They were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, uh, What meaneth this? Others mocking said, These men are full of new wine. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea and all ye that dwell in Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words, for these are not drunken, as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. <clears throat> but this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm going to stop right there, and uh, let's pray, and we'll let you be seated. Lord, we love you, Jesus. I ask you to help us this morning, God, to preach this message here today that you've given me. Lord, I sure need your help today, God. Bless each and every person here under the sound of my voice today, God. We love you. And we give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. Very, very familiar text here. This is probably the, uh, the very... This is where we get apostolic or Pentecost from, uh, the, the day of Pentecost. And there's been a lot, a lots, a lots, a lots of messages preached from Acts chapter 2. Amen. They were together. They were all thinking the same thing in one accord. Amen. And they were all in one place. Now, for those that don't believe you have to go to a specific church building or place of gathering, um, that's the only way the Holy Ghost fell when it fell for the first time. So if it fell that way for the first time, uh, it ought to be good for any time thereafter. Amen. Now, I know people have gotten the Holy Ghost driving down the road in, in, their, in, in a restaurant or at the store or in their closet. And the house, people get the Holy Ghost everywhere. It'll fall on you. Amen. But the initial outpouring happened to a group of people that were gathered together. Amen. And the Bible says, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. Amen. So we must come together, first and foremost. And this is what I was preaching about the other night. Uh, we ought to be glad to get to go to church. It ought to be exciting to us. It ought not to be a job and a chore. Amen. The job and the chore is to find the right message and find the right songs and, and, uh, and, and allow the anointing to flow and follow the Spirit. That's the job. Amen. Because we can come in here uh, with the idea of preaching what we see or what we feel and, and not what God wants and it, and it, it doesn't do any good. Man, or we can come in here and as far as worship goes and we can sing uh, the latest uh, hit song somewhere and, and uh, boy, that's what we like and what we think, but, but uh, if that's not what God wants, it doesn't work. Right. Amen. So we got to be uh, able to follow the Spirit of God and seek His face. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, because they were gathered together... And because they were in one mind, in one accord, amen, uh, the Holy Ghost was able to fall. You'll notice here, the Holy Ghost will not fall 
in a crowded room where there's nothing but chaos and confusion. Man, you can't have people over here talking about the scoreboards of their favorite game and these people over here talking about their favorite uh, uh, restaurants over here and this person, these group back here talking about what is going on in politics and uh, and uh, the preachers on the platform are, are talking about uh, uh, other things and there's just a whole bunch of chaos and, and confusion in the house. You can't get the Holy Ghost with your brain scattered. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But the Bible says they were in one mind and one accord and, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting. When the Holy Ghost comes in, it just fills everywhere. Amen. If there's sinners in the house, they feel it too. Amen. And they began to be under conviction because they feel something that they're not familiar with. And therefore, it's validated to them that this is real and that they now need to do something about their sinful condition. Amen. And so when they get under conviction, they might fight it and they might fuss with it. Amen. But if they keep coming to where the Spirit of God is, eventually it will draw them to a place where they will begin to cry out to God. Okay, God, I'm here. I don't know what to do, but if you'll help me, I want to live for you. Right. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. When I first began to pray, I didn't know how to pray. I didn't know who to pray to. I didn't know what to pray for. Amen. But as I began to get closer to God, he began to deal with me about certain things. And then, then the man of God would come and talk to me. You need to do this, need to do that. Or someone else in the, in the, in the sanctuary would say, you know, you need to pray this or repent that. Or, or, and then would guide me on how to talk to God. Amen. Praise the Lord. But it was the Spirit of God that began to convict me and draw me in. Hallelujah. And because of that uh, spirit feeling the place, uh, the Bible says there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire. Now it appeared unto them. It wasn't in their brains. They didn't imagine it. It appeared. Now that's a powerful move of God. Hallelujah. That's a powerful move of God. And it sat upon each of them. They could see. You had a little light, a little flame above you. Man, praise the Lord. And the Bible says that they all began to speak in tongues as the Spirit gave the utterance. Now, you know what happens when the Holy Ghost comes in. You begin to speak in tongues. Uh, you begin to be extremely joyful. You, you begin to be uh, overwhelmed with the sense of peace and, and, and clarity and, and cleanliness that you'll either melt down and begin to weep or you'll begin to rejoice and dance and clap and, and shout and, or, or whatever. There's many different uh, uh, responses to it. But when the Holy Ghost comes in, it, it changes the way you uh, uh, act and think for the moment. And you begin to speak in tongues. Uh, that's not a man-made thing. If it is, it ain't of God. Praise the Lord. The Holy Ghost should be of God. You speak in tongues as the Spirit gives the utterance. Amen. You can't come up with your own tongue. Amen. See my tie, tie my tie. That won't work. Amen. It might sound good, and it, and it might sound like the real thing, but it ain't the real thing. If you're going to have the real thing, it's got to come from God. Praise the Lord. The Holy Ghost, uh, if you're going to be kept by the Lord, you've got to have the Holy Ghost, uh, the real deal. Amen. Oh, my goodness, Brother Smith, why are you preaching this to, to, there's no visitors in the house today. I'm telling you right now, if you'll get the real deal, you won't struggle. Come on, you won't have, you won't have some uh, problems with flesh and problems with uh, the world and problems. You just, you'll want the things of God because you've got the real deal. <clears throat> now, the devil may come your way and throw things at you and, and put kinks in the, in, in the operation, but you know what? The real deal will take care of that. The real Holy Ghost. Uh, the, I'm talking about 
Does anybody remember when you went to the altar to pray for the Holy Ghost for the first time? Amen. You might have been a little bit nervous. You might not have known, and and surely you didn't know what was fixing to happen. You didn't know how it was going to feel. You didn't know. uh, Now you've heard people talk about it. You might have seen other people get it. But you still had this... uh, Uh, this little bit of reserve inside of you, how is it going to happen for me? Amen. Praise the Lord. But you still had to come down and get the real Holy Ghost. The genuine Holy Ghost on the inside. Amen. Maybe I, can I ask this question and and I, I, I don't want anybody to raise your hands. I'm not, I'm not asking for that. But I wonder today, when's the last time you spoke in tongues and it was the real deal? Amen. Have you ever noticed you go to, and I'm not knocking this, I'm not saying anything bad about it. Have you ever noticed you go to uh, a fellowship meeting or a camp meeting somewhere, and you hear uh, you hear someone speak in tongues, and they they're walking and praying or they're doing whatever, and um, it just it just seems like it's it it comes so quickly and so easy. Amen. And then. For whatever reason, they can cut it off and stop and say something into somebody's ear just 60 seconds later. Now, I'm not knocking. I'm not saying they don't have the Holy Ghost. Amen. And chances are I've done the very same thing. Amen. Because it seems like as you live for God over time, you begin to be familiar with and comfortable with uh, the Holy Ghost. Amen. But when you're in need of something from God, like the first time you got the Holy Ghost, you, you, you had a little bit more fervency in your prayer. There was a little bit more urgency in what you needed, and you really didn't know. I, I'm just wondering if, if, uh, if it's been a while since you just came to the altar, wherever your altar is, at whatever time you pray, and say, God, will you do it for me again like you did the first time? And that would be wonderful. Amen. I had a cousin, that, and I don't think she was mocking. I don't think she was at all. I hope she wasn't. But but she would she would say things like, I know grandma, she's gonna pray, she's gonna pray, and she's gonna pray for this one and that one, and she's gonna pray for this, and then she's gonna speak in tongues, and this is what she's gonna say in tongues, and rattle it right off. And that's exactly what my grandmother sounded like. Praise the Lord. And I'm not knocking that. And I believe my grandmother is right with God and is in heaven or wherever she's at. Amen. And I don't think the cousin was actually mocking. I think she was just making a statement, you know. But I wonder, I wonder, I wonder if we could just get past the, oh, I'm trying to look for the right word. We, we've, we've gotten into a pattern of uh, uh, just it's, it's, it's the same old, same old. It's the same way every time. The same, the same thing triggers it, the same song, the same atmosphere, the same. Uh, but I wonder if we could, I wonder what, what would change if, if we would... Uh, Go get the Holy Ghost like we did the first time. Amen. Are you saying we got to act like we're sinners and need God? I don't know what you got to do. <laughs> I'm, not, 
I'm not saying you got to act like anything. I want you to be real. Yeah. Amen. But I want you to have the real, genuine Holy Ghost. Yeah. Let, me, let me ask you this. That person that comes and speaks in tongues all the time. I've seen them. I've seen them. They come into church. I've seen people kneel down. And as soon as their knees hit the floor, they're speaking in tongues. As soon as their knees hit the floor. I'm not knocking it. I, if it's real, it's real. If it ain't. Let me ask you this. How come is it that those same types of individuals can do that and then go home and, and have a nervous breakdown or a cussing fit? Something's not real. Something has become comfortable to them. And they have, a, they have an emotional touch, uh, a sensation that comes when you come to the house of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. But I wonder, I wonder how their life would be changed if they went and got the Holy Ghost like they did the first time. Amen. If the first time was real and genuine. Amen. You know how you can tell if the Holy Ghost you got the first time was real and genuine? It's because when you come up from there, that you notice that there was an absolute change in the way you think. Man, might not have changed the way you look just yet. Might not have changed some things otherwise. But in your mind, your mind was changed where, all right, this is what I want. This is what I've got to have. And I'll give up anything that gets in the way of this. That's how you know you got the real Holy Ghost. There is an absolute joy and peace that comes with the real Holy Ghost. There is a full cleansing uh, uh, of the real Holy Ghost that will make you feel so clean on the inside and so holy. Man, you won't even know what to do with yourself. And you'll think, my goodness, uh, the heavens are real uh, and the angels are real and God is real and this is powerful and I don't know how I can get another dose, but I want some more of it. That's when you first got the Holy Ghost. And when you first got the Holy Ghost, you were so excited to tell everybody that you got the Holy Ghost. And you were so excited to go back to church. And you were so excited to get back to praying again because you wanted to experience the real Holy Ghost again. Amen. But there is an imitation Holy Ghost that sounds just like the real Holy Ghost. I mean, there's an imitation of a, a Christian imitation that walks like someone that's got the Holy Ghost. There's an imitation that looks like someone with the Holy Ghost. Amen. There's an imitation of the Holy Ghost or the Christian field Holy Ghost that, that sounds like they're walking with God. But I'm telling you what... The real Holy Ghost will keep you. The real Holy Ghost will take you through thick and thin. The real Holy Ghost will allow you to walk through the fiery furnace. The real Holy Ghost will give you the ability to endure the lion's den. The real Holy Ghost will help you walk through the Red Sea. Come on. And all the problems of the world. It doesn't matter if famine comes to you because you've got the real Holy Ghost. Come on, the Holy Ghost that keeps you. It doesn't matter if the world falls apart around you because you've got the real Holy Ghost. It doesn't matter to you if your family walks out on you because you've got the real Holy Ghost. And you've got real brothers and sisters that are full of the real Holy Ghost. And they'll be your family and they'll be your brother and they'll be your sister. And the real Holy Ghost lets you know of a surety that whether you've got parents in this life you have a heavenly father that loves you dearly and will give you anything that you ask the real Holy Ghost I'm talking about the real deal today hallelujah 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 mm, my goodness We got to start looking at the real and the fake. 
They look so much alike. But you can tell the fake from the real by what each one can endure. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know why this church is still here? Because the real Holy Ghost was involved. And some folks that said, you know what? Whatever happens, happens, but I got to love God. I got to live for God. I got to serve God. I got to make it to heaven. You know why things happen? Because, the, because sin is prevalent in the world. Uh, come on, the love of many will wax cold. Man, that's just the day we're living in. There's no telling what's going to come down the pike next. Man, we know that the Bible said, as it were in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. And he said that about Jonah. He said that about Sodom and Gomorrah. And all we have to do is look into the Bible and see how those places were and what those people were doing and how they were acting. And there's no way you can uh, say within yourself uh, that this generation is not becoming just like those. Man. So we know that the Lord is coming back. We know it's going to be soon. I don't know the day or time. Neither do you. Nobody does. Not even the angels in heaven. Amen. And they're constantly anticipating, looking for that command to blow the trumpet and declare that time shall be no more. Amen. That is going to happen. But I'm telling you right now, there are, there are things that's going to come our way. Things that we're going to be faced with. Decisions that we're going to have to make. Come on. And we're already being faced with some small, light decisions now. But the big decisions are still coming. But you know what's helping us along the way? The real Holy Ghost. The real deal. Come on, the imitation stuff will only take you so far. It will only take you to the door of the church. You can come in here and never be a part of the church if you don't have the real deal. But if you have the real deal, this is your church. And these are my people. And these are my friends. And this is what I'm all about. And this is what I want to do. And this is how I want to live. And I do these things because the real Holy Ghost is on the inside. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, amen. My son went to uh, Camp Goddard last week, and uh, I don't know how it all went as far as the conversation, but they asked him, said, why are you swimming without swim clothes on? Swimming pants. And... Uh, you know, because he had, I guess he had jeans on or something. I don't know what all he had on. But uh, but anyway, it wasn't, he, didn't, he wasn't doing what the rest of them were doing. And maybe it wasn't the right answer, but it wasn't the wrong answer. He said, because I, I go to church. Now, you got to think, 11-year-old boy. There's only one church that he knows of. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Now, he may not realize that everybody else in that group may go to church somewhere, too. But the real Holy Ghost, the real Holy Ghost uh, will keep you clean and straight and right. Yeah. Hallelujah. Right. Maybe we need to have a discussion about uh, uh, the way you say things, no doubt, and who you say them to and what your audience is. And, and uh, you know, but I don't fault him for saying that he goes to church. Right. Amen. We know what we know what he was talking about. Yeah. Yeah. But maybe there were some in there that could have gotten offended because, you know what, they go to their churches too. Right. And I understand that. So we'll have that conversation with him. But you know what, I'm going to let it be because... He's doing what he does because he goes to church. Amen. As far as I'm concerned and how I feel, this kind of church is the only church. Amen. I don't believe the Baptist church is the right church. 
I don't believe the Catholic Church is the right church. I don't believe the Presbyterian Church is the right church. I, I don't believe the Nazarenes are right. I don't believe the Jehovah Witnesses are right. You want to know what's right? An apostolic field church, a Holy Ghost field church. Amen. Whether you call yourself apostolic or Pentecost, all I need to know is do you have the real deal? Do you have the real Holy Ghost? Come on, the real Holy Ghost will keep you from having an affair with somebody else. The real Holy Ghost will keep you from drinking alcohol and doing drugs. The real Holy Ghost will keep you safe from pornography and cigarettes. The real Holy Ghost will keep you from filthy jokes and unclean situations. Hallelujah. The real Holy Ghost. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, every one of us, if you'll just kindly reach over and paint yourself, see if you're really real. <laughs> Y'all are human. Just like I'm human. Every one of you, no doubt, have at some point in time lost your temper. Maybe every one of you have said things that you regretted saying. Some things you've had to apologize for saying. You've had to change some things that you one time did and you no longer do. Amen. Amen. Every one of us are in the flesh, and every one of us, amen, have moments of weakness. I don't care how high the church gets. I don't care how powerful it gets. I don't care if we have 50 soul revival in, in the next month. It doesn't matter. I'm telling you right now. There'll be another lull in the things, uh, another dry spell, another uh, opportunity to work uh, on ourselves because we're flesh. Amen. And we get in trouble because we're flesh. Amen. There are times, oh, we love the Holy Ghost. We really do. We really love the Holy Ghost. But there are times when we don't want to pray, when we don't want to fast, when we don't want to do uh, church business. Amen. Why? Because we're flesh. Because we're tired. Because we're wore out. Because we're overwhelmed. Amen. You know what? When it gets that way, when it gets to where you uh, are struggling with strength, spiritual strength, when it gets that way that you're tired spiritually, that you're wore out spiritually, that you're overwhelmed spiritually, amen, because I, I'm not talking about the natural because you can do that in one day's work at your job, just get plum wore out, man. but I'm talking about the, the, the spiritual uh, weakness and the spiritual uh, anxiety and the spiritual problems, you know what needs to happen when you get tired spiritually, when you get wore out spiritually, when you get overwhelmed spiritually, you know what needs to happen? You need to come down to the altar wherever it's at and get the Holy Ghost again like you did the first time. Man, I'm talking about do it just like you did the first time. God, forgive me of my sins. Oh, hallelujah. Because you see, when you're tired spiritually and wore out spiritually and weak spiritually, I mean, there's a great chance that there's some, there's some sins. Because you're not as strong as you were a few weeks ago. Amen. Praise the Lord. So you got to come down to the altar and get the real deal again. Amen. Is there anything wrong with praying through again and again? Who said you only had to do it once? 
I mean, who come up with that idea? Somebody that didn't like to pray. Someone wanted easy coasting ride into heaven. That's not going to happen, is it? Man, because the devil's going to make sure that you're overwhelmed all the time. He's going to make sure that you're tired all the time. He's going to make sure that you're busy all the time. Whatever he has to do to keep you from coming down here and get the real deal, he's going to do it. Even if it's giving you an invitation. Oh, let's wing it. Let's wing it. This will work till we can do better. I don't know, will it? That's what the five foolish thought. We'll just wing it. Ah, there's enough in there, surely. Ah, mate, well, you know what? We've been here this long. He ain't come yet, so we got a little bit of time. Amen. Is there any problem that you have spiritually? That God can't take care of for you? That God can't help you with? Come on, we mentioned tempers. We mentioned uh, loose tongue. We mentioned uh, different things. I don't know what I don't know what things the devil throws at you. But I know he does. I know you have weaknesses. I got weaknesses. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. Come on, Brother Smith. We don't need to talk about that. I get kind of get to squirming in my seat because I, you know, I just don't want to, uh, you know what it is. A little nerve-wracking, maybe a little embarrassing because here I've been preaching the gospel for uh, 20-something years. And I still have to fight this old flesh. No way I should be, man, I should be, I should be turning water into wine and walking on that water. Right? I mean, I shouldn't have a problem in the world. Amen. I shouldn't have to work on this flesh. I mean, this flesh should be, uh, my Lord, we should just be close to God. I mean, as close, uh, uh, I mean, just yeah. almost angelic yes, as, long as, as long as we've been in church, right? Yeah. Yeah. But you know what? That's not the case, is it? Yeah, now, now, obviously, if, uh, if, you're, if you're in a, an actual act of sin right now, that's not what I'm talking about, okay? Uh, yeah. I mean, if you're if you're going around the corner to the bar, that's uh, we got that's that's more than a fault. <laughs> All right. Come on, if you're slipping out uh, and having an affair, that's more than a fault. <laughs> Come on, if you're if you're uh, actively uh, looking at computer screens that shows images that shouldn't be, that's a that's more than a fault. <laughs> well, praise the Lord. But I'm talking about the, 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 the mundane things that constantly keep us from where God wants us to be. Amen. There's nothing, there's nothing that you've gotten yourself into that God can't fix for you. We talked about the lady this morning praying for her needs. Amen. There's nothing in that situation that God can't heal and fix. Praise the Lord. Sister Stephanie, we hadn't seen her in months. Amen. But I'm telling you right now, there's nothing that God can't fix for her in her situation. Amen. Matter of fact, I'll tell it like this. God has helped and blessed people that were way worse than, uh, than she is. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, praise the Lord. But you know what's got to happen? The individual, that's you, that's me, that's her, that's him. Come on. The individual has to come to the altar for ourselves and say, Okay, God, this is it. I'm done with me. I want you to do what you want to do. I've made a mess of it, God. I keep making a mess of this situation. Come on, this fault just keeps on bothering me. I've tried different things. You know what we need to try? We need to try the real Holy Ghost. Just get it again. Come on, just get it again. The Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Well, praise the Lord. When you first got the Holy Ghost, that next service back, you came through the door bouncing and dancing, and everybody was beautiful, and everybody was happy, 
everything was lovely and you just couldn't wait to hear the preaching and you couldn't wait for the song to sing and you and you didn't care if it was a, an altar call, you were just going to go anyway because you wanted it again. Man, you wanted it again. The real deal. Man, praise the Lord. How long has it been since you had the real Holy Ghost? Not, not just a leftover experience. Well, I know how to pray, and I know, I know what to say, and I know what to do. Yeah, but what about just letting God come in and letting Him do all the talking? Huh? What about just letting Him pray and speak through you? We call that praying in the Holy Ghost. Oh, and by the way, you're building yourself up on your most holy faith yeah. that way. Amen. How long has it been since you prayed in the Holy Ghost? Come on. How long has it been since we prayed in the Holy Ghost and we got the real, the real genuine Holy Ghost? Brother Smith, are you saying that we don't have the real Holy Ghost? I'm not saying that today. But I'm saying if you're still struggling with the same old problems and you're still uh, having a hard time getting to church and having a hard time plugging in and having a hard time having the joy. of the, If you don't have the joy that comes with the Holy Ghost, that's a good sign that you need to come back and get it again. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. If you don't have the peace that comes with the real Holy Ghost... Uh, Right now on the inside, that is a good uh, determining factor whether or not you need to come and get the Holy Ghost again. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost is the only thing that's going to be able to keep you. Amen. As far as the lust of the flesh go, and I done, we done determined that we're all flesh. The Bible says if you walk in the Spirit, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Amen. Amen. Romans chapter 8 gives a description of the things that will work and the things that won't work. And carnal mind will not work. The things of the flesh does not work with God. God is the Spirit. And they that worship them must worship Him in spirit and in truth. Amen. We can't come in here carnally minded and expect to get spiritual things from God. We got to come in here and we got to sacrifice the flesh and say, God, here I am. What do you need from me today? What, what do I need to give up? What do I need to let go of? Amen. And I, I, I'm, you, you're going to have to determine what that is. Amen. You, between you and God. Praise the Lord. I'm not here today to try to name what's sin and what ain't. Or what's on your mind and what ain't. But you know when you come into this house, what's keeping you from submitting to the will of God. You know that. Man, somebody said it today. You come into the room and you're the only one that ain't bathed. <laughs> you're the only one that's not going to know any different. But everybody else, hey, okay, so-and-so ain't where they need to be with God. Oh, all right. Well, maybe the Lord's working on that. Maybe pastor's on that. Well, boy, I can sure see it. You know why? Because that, 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 that aroma is in the air. <laughs> Hallelujah. Can you tell when somebody's got a bad spirit? Can you tell when somebody's depressed? If you ain't careful, some of those spirits will try their best to jump off on you. Amen. But the Holy Ghost. Oh, come on. You know what you need when you come to the house of God. 
Come on, you say, well, I hope, I hope they sing that song tonight. Or I hope he preaches about this or that. You know what? That's fine and dandy. And maybe you need to pray those things. But you know what? When we come into the house of God, God, I'm in your house now. And here I am to worship you, God. But if you'll help me come clean with whatever I need to come clean. I just want the peace of God in my life. I just want the joy of the Lord to be on me constantly, God. Hallelujah. You know what? We don't just live for God while we're at church. We have to live for God when we're out on the streets and in our jobs and at our houses. And you know what? If you're not happy out there, they're going to see it. If you're not excited about God out there, they're going to see it. Amen. Praise the Lord. And the same Holy Ghost that you got for the first time that gave you such an excitement and such a zeal. That same, the Holy Ghost don't change. We change. When you first got the Holy Ghost, you wasn't worrying about hurting somebody's feelings. Getting in their bubble. All you wanted to do was tell them how great you felt and how powerful God was. Oh man, you got to get this Holy Ghost. You got to try this. This is wonderful. And so on and so forth. You're not talking about doctrines and, and do's and don'ts and, and standards and all of these. That's, that never came out of your mouth when you first got the Holy Ghost. But what you wanted to do was say, hey, look what I got. Hey, look what happened to me. I got the real thing. Yeah. Nothing like the real thing. Woo, I got to have the real thing when I go to church again. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Well... Can it happen in this place? There are just a few folks here, but that's all right. Do we have to have a thousand people to have a tremendous move of God? You already know the answer to that because we've had powerful moves of God right here. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. In the dream that I had about the Holy Ghost just like lightning bolts hitting this one and that one and this one. And that. You know who it was? It was just us. And the Holy Ghost was moving, moving, moving. Amen. And it was just like a, I don't know, like lightning bolt. Just bam and a little fire. And, just, and God was, and he was in the middle of it. But he could just go anywhere he wanted. And everywhere he wanted simultaneously. And he told me in the, in the dream, I can, I can touch whoever I want, wherever I am. I can just do it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Some of you have had similar, similar dreams. Amen. The Holy Ghost can work and move. It doesn't matter how many is in number. All he said is he needs two or three that are gathered together in his name. And he'll be in the midst. Amen. I want to share this with you. And we'll, we'll try to wrap it up. I was as I was on my trip to Ohio. I have, I might have already told it. I don't know. Well, y'all just bear with me if I have, because I can't remember. <laughs> but I, I, I had prayed for the Lord to heal me, or would He heal me at that meeting, or was this going to be the time? And uh, and I left it at that. And so I went to dinner with some of the elders. And, uh, and then the next night, Brother Avery preached. And it was, it was awesome. It was awesome. He talked about men of honor. And it was a good, good message. And so I went back to the motel room, uh, the, ho the hotel room afterward, and uh, prayed a little while. And I went to sleep. And uh, sometime in the middle of the night, the Lord spoke to me. And he simply, he just said this, and it was, it was almost as if he was being uh, carefree as he said it. He said, I have the ability to make you walk straight while you are simultaneously drunken on the Holy Ghost. Now... When I 
I woke up, I immediately knew, I automatically knew that he was not talking about my natural walk. I knew that when he said that, he was talking about my spiritual walk. And so in the, in the next two services, the messages came forth and they began to verify what he was talking about in that little short snippet of a conversation I had with him. Actually, he said all, he done all the talking, but at the end of the, at the end of the meeting, I began to pray, God, okay, then I just want to be drunk on the Holy Ghost. I just want to be drunk on the Holy Ghost because the Holy Ghost will make us walk straight. The Holy Ghost will make us talk right. The Holy Ghost will make us look right. And I don't have time to get into the dress codes, the sleeves, the, you know, the necklines, the skirt lines. I don't have time to do all of that today. But I'm telling you, the Holy Ghost will make that happen for you. He'll just let you know, oh, hey, this ain't long enough. Yeah. Or, hey, oh, this is, this is too tight. And so on and so forth. The Holy Ghost will do that. Yeah. The Holy Ghost. The real Holy Ghost. The real Holy Ghost. Amen. The genuine Holy Ghost will keep you straight. But I began to pray, God, I want to be drunk on the Holy Ghost then. Because I want to walk straight. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm going to close here today. But I wonder. Uh, Brother James, you'll help me just, just a minute here. I wonder. I wonder today. If you will consider. Even in the slightest. Just consider asking God for the Holy Ghost again. Like you got it the first time. Is that all right? Oh, Brother Smith, I've had the Holy Ghost for many years. I know what the Holy Ghost is. I know all about it. I've been living for God. I'm not, I'm not saying anything against that. I'm not saying anything against that. You see, because I can look at you and say, you know what? So have I. But this is what God gave me. You know what he told the, in the letters to the seven churches? He told one of them, he said, you know what? Uh, you're doing good here, here, and here, but I have somewhat against you. Now, he wasn't rebuking all of them. There wasn't a one of them. There was not a one of those seven churches that he cut off or judged. But he did tell them, unless you repent or unless you change or unless you, you know, there were some stipulations. But never one of them seven churches was to be destroyed. But you know what he said to the one? I believe it was Sardis. I'll have to go back and look. But he said, what you need to do is do your first works again. You know what that sounds a lot like to me? Get the Holy Ghost again like you did the first time. However you got it the first time, get it that way this time. But please let it be the real, genuine Holy Ghost. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can I have a show of hands today? How many's got the Holy Ghost? The Holy Ghost. All right. Man, I'm asking us all. I'm asking you all. Amen. What's wrong with getting the Holy Ghost again just the way you got it the first time? Hallelujah, Brother Smith, that ain't never been done in churches anybody I know of. Well, I'm telling you what, uh, this ain't every other church. <laughs> Hallelujah. And this message God gave to me, he just said, you know what, I want to give it to him again, like I gave him to him the first time. You know what I think God is missing? He's missing that reaction that you had when you first got the Holy Ghost, uh, that, that how you responded to him, how you responded to it, uh, the actual infilling of the Holy Ghost. I'm telling you right now, it'll help you walk straight. It'll help you live right. It'll help you overcome those small things that keep bothering you, those small foxes that seem to be spoiling the vines all the time. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's stand here this morning.